morning, St. Andrews. So happy to be worshiping with you today. Whether you're here in the sanctuary with us or you are at home watching from your home, we're just so happy that we can all worship together today. So today is a beautiful day today, and I'm hoping that some of you noticed as you were walking in, something very exciting was happening. Did anybody notice anything? We have opened up holy grounds as of today. So let's just go ahead and be excited about that. For those of you who are like, what the heck is Holy Grounds? It is our coffee hour that because of the pandemic we had closed. Today we have it opened it back up again. So that's just a blessing. That's a little teeny tiny sign that we are moving in a, the right direction. So we're very excited about that. Now some of you might say, well, that's too late for coffee for me. Well, you can come to an early service because they were really, they cheered really loud about Holy Ground. So I guess it depends when you get here. So, so that was a really good thing for today. And we're going to be looking for volunteers to help us with that, to keep it going. But we're so happy that we're kind of moving in a little bit of the right direction. Um, I also want to let you know that yesterday we had a serve day here at the campus, and it was really wonderful. We had about between 50 and 60 people gathered, and we were basically sort of changing out mulch and just cleaning up the campus a bit, and we made the decision, and we took off our masks, and we, we kept our distance, but we had the best time. It was a gorgeous day. We had a lot of cloud and a lot of breeze and a lot of food, and we had fun, and we, the grounds looked beautiful. So grateful for everybody who helped. And some of you are sitting there thinking, shoot, I missed an opportunity. I got some good news. We have another serve day coming up. So on May 8th, we're going to do another serve day. But that one's going to be at the campus of where we host um, Family Promise. It's just here in town, and we're going to go there, and we're going to spruce up their campus as well. And um, Andy's Angels, which is a ministry of this church, they're going to feed us that day. So that is May 8th. It'll be the same timing from about 9 to 12.30. It'll be just in the morning, and we'll all gather, and you need to register. But this is a great opportunity because you can bring the kids. People had kids yesterday, and the kids can work or, or run around and play, and you can work, and they see you serving. That's the, the best thing is they get to see you in service and that is the greatest teaching of all and so we just want to encourage you to consider that and sign up for that this may 8th now if you really like the idea of service here is another opportunity you may or may not have noticed but when you pulled in today the blood mobile is here it's over by the family life center right over here on our campus in the parking lot and today after this service we want to encourage you to walk over there and give and the reason this is important because it is a need but it's also a unique opportunity to serve and get no thank you in response. You know, so often when we serve, we want to be thanked for what we do. And there's nothing wrong with that. But service is about the doing. And so here's an opportunity to go over and serve folks that you will never meet but truly have a need. And so I want to encourage you to follow in the service. If you've never given blood before, you may not know this, but you get a bunch of freebies when you do it too. You go over there and they got a bunch of free gifts to give you. You will not be disappointed. And so it's just a great way to give to our community. So following this service, head out and give some blood. Let's see. We're going to have one more announcement from um, the head of our SBRC. But before we do, I have a special announcement today. I want to give you, explain it first. So we, as United Methodists, are part of the Florida Conference. That's the whole state of Florida minus part of the panhandle. And so that's a big, state of Florida, we're a big state. And there's a special initiative in the um, Florida Conference, and it is called Fill the Table. And this focuses on churches that are really feeding, or, or, are, are, are answering the need of hunger in their community. And this year, they decided to honor some outstanding volunteers. And they chose six people that were outstanding volunteers in feeding the need of hunger in the state of Florida. Only six people in the state of Florida. And I am so proud to announce today that one of them are from our church. And I would like to encourage Carol Manny to stand up and let's congratulate her. Thank you, Carol. So what Carol was saying, if you did not hear, she's, of course, because this is Carol, thanking everybody else. And Carol knows, and we all know, it takes an entire congregation to feed as many people as we do each Monday or each Wednesday. 
But here's the deal. If there's not somebody driving it, nothing happens. And so Carol has been the one who's been driving it. And then all of you have stood up and answered the call. And so we're just so proud. We're so proud of our food pantry and of all the people that we feed in our community every week. And we're especially proud of Carol and the leadership she has brought to that. So that's just a really cool thing. And now we have a special announcement from the chair of our staff parish relationship committee. Good morning, St. Andrews. My name is Brent Juren, and I'm the chairman of the Staff Parish Relations Committee here at St. Andrews United Methodist Church. Think of us as your human relations office for your church. Today is Announcement Sunday at United Methodist Church, and every year, every pastor in the United Methodist Church is up for reappointment to a new appointment. The bishop makes those decisions, and this year, I'm very pleased to announce to you that the bishop has reappointed our co-pastors, Gary and Jane Wrightout, to be with us for another year. May God bless their time with us. May it be a blessing to them and our church as a whole. God bless each of you. Help me in welcoming the Wrightouts back. God bless. Good morning, St. Andrews. In spite of the limitations of COVID, it is still important to greet each other in worship. If you are here in the sanctuary, we encourage you to take a moment to stand and wave, elbow bump, say hello, or introduce yourself to people you don't know while keeping an appropriate distance. If you are watching at home, let us know you are here in the chat space, or take a moment to send a text to someone you miss seeing. You may be seated. So we are particularly excited this morning because we have a baby to baptize. So I'd like to invite the um, Rootin family to come down with little Amelia and um, come on down to the front. And I think that's also including the godparents are going to join us as well. This is very exciting to me, to start being able to do baptisms again. That's very thrilling. And I took my mask off, and I wasn't going to do that. Let me grab my mask. Sorry. I will put it back on for the baptism. So we found out that we are all neighbors, so that's kind of fun too. We walk, Gary and I like to walk at night, and why don't you guys come over here, and there is one section in our neighborhood that is the party central. Like, there's kids everywhere. And it's just so much fun. And when we walk through there, we're like, this is the best place to raise kids. And it 
turns out that's their, that's their corner. <laughs> so, and a lot of those are their kids. So this is number five. So this is number five. So we are truly blessed today to be able to, to um, do this. But first, before we start, most importantly, is that yours or your mom's dress? Is it really? Okay, so the dress she's wearing is a combination, this baby's dress, of both um, Shasta and um, her mother's um, baptismal dress. That's beautiful. So who's the seamstress? You just had it. You just put it together. Oh, okay. All right. Slip and dress together as a combination. So um, this is Brandon and, and David Shasta, and they are joined by Brandon's brother, Sean, and his wife, Amanda, who are going to serve as godparents. And then all the family are in the back over there. So we're so happy you're all with us today. So I have some questions for mom and dad. So let's do those first. And um, baptism is such an exciting theme to us because it is a way for us to celebrate that every baby that joins this family is our opportunity to help raise them in the faith. And so it's a gift to all of us as well as a gift to this child. So I have questions for mom and dad. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of the world, and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? And do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? And will you nurture little Amelia in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and example, she will be guided to accept God's grace for herself, to profess her faith openly, and lead a Christian life? Good answers. Okay. Will you all join me as we um, pray over the water? Loving God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon this gift of water. We thank you today for this opportunity to baptize little Amelia, to be joined with you in both your death and in your resurrection, understanding that the grace that will be imparted to her today will be grace that will carry her through her entire life. I thank you, Father God, for her parents who understand the importance of raising her in the faith, who love you and, and want to serve you and want to lead her in the ways of Christ. Bless her today and bless their family as they all gather to celebrate this amazing opportunity as little Amelia joins the family of God. In Jesus' precious name, amen. All right, I'm going to move this over here. I'm going to put my mask back on. I have not, so Amelia's two weeks. She's only two weeks old. I have not had a baby fix like this, and I don't remember when. So this is very exciting to me. All right. All right, sweetie. I think I'm in heaven. All right, look at this sweet little girl. Okay, I'll move. How about that? There we go. There we go. What name is given this baby? Okay, here we go. Amelia Lee Routon, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Oh, she's not sure she likes that water. May the Holy Spirit work within you that being born of water and the Spirit, you will always be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we have a congregational response. Will you join me as we all read together, which affirms that we are going to help raise this beautiful little girl in the faith. So join me. With God's help, we will so order our lives after the example of Christ that Amelia, surrounded by steadfast love, may be established in the faith and confirmed and strengthened in the way that leads eternal. <laughs> All right. Now, we also have a song because it's important to sing. So Janet's going to lead us in a song as we celebrate little Amelia. And I'm going to walk this baby around. I think she's going to let me. So, Hi there. i got one eye open. Hello. Amelia, Amelia, God claims you, God helps you, protects you, and loves you too. We this day do all agree, a child of God you'll always be. Amelia, Amelia, God claims you, God helps you.
you, protects you, and loves you too. We, your family, love you so. We vow to help your faith to grow. Amelia, Amelia, God claims you. God helps you, protects you, and loves you too. We are here to say this day that we will help you on your way. Amelia, Amelia, God claims you. God helps you, protects you, and loves you too. And if you should tire or cry, then we will sing this lullaby. Amelia, Amelia, God claims you. God helps you, protects you, and loves you too. see you in the neighborhood and at church. God bless you. I'm so happy you're with us today. Okay. Yeah, let's go celebrate and celebrate. That's right. I wouldn't even think about that. That is our blessing. Good morning, St. Andrews. I'm Miss Lisa, and I'm here today with Caroline to talk to you about praying Big. big. Our scripture today comes from the book of Ephesians, chapter 3. Paul says that God is able to do immeasurably more than we ask. So what does immeasurably mean? Something so big you can't measure it. Exactly. Paul is telling us that God wants us to pray big. Praying big means asking God for the really tough things. Things that take miracles in order to receive. Now, we want to show you a really cool experiment about praying big. So we're here with Catherine and Caroline to see if Catherine is able to do the impossible. So what do you have there, Kate? I've got a glass cup. A glass cup and? A plate with water. Okay, we colored the water blue so that you guys can see it better. And what are you going to try to do with the cup and the water? I'm going to try and make the water defy gravity. Oh, she's gonna try to make the water move up away from gravity. What do you think, Caroline? Is that possible? No. Caroline doesn't think it's possible. Let's try it, Kate. Hmm, it's not really doing anything. Ugh. So maybe it was impossible after all. What do you guys think? Yeah. Wrong. You don't think it's impossible? Is it wrong? Oh, let's see. Where's your candle, Kate? Right. So, let's pretend that the candle represents God and the flame represents us praying to God. Because remember, when we pray to God, anything is possible. So go on and put that candle down. All right, good job. And then we're going to put the cup on top and see what happens if the Impossible can become possible with God. What? Look at the water. Whee. What's it doing, guys? It is floating. Or it's defying gravity. That's right. Gravity. It's defying gravity. The water's going up into the cup. Wow. So, remember that whatever we pray for the impossible, God can make it possible. This experiment was just an example that... If you think something is too hard or tough or too impossible, that God wants you to pray for it anyway. Because when we pray big, it brings us closer to God. What's our challenge for this week, Caroline? Pray for a miracle. Pray for the impossible. Pray big. Let's pray big. Dear God, thank you for teaching us to always pray big. Thank you for always listening to our prayers. Our big prayer for today is for our world to come together in peace so that everyone can feel special and loved. Please help us to remember to pray for the impossible because you can make it possible. Amen. Good morning. 
I'm Reverend Gary Rideout, the other co-senior pastor here at St. Andrews United Methodist Church. And that was a wonderful lead-in to our time of prayer. And um, it, to pray big, because we have a lot of big issues going on in our, in our world today. We're, it seems like recently we just faced with one crisis and one issue after another. And the, the, this past week, this, the George Floyd uh, verdict has underscored that we need to do some soul searching here in our, in our nation, in our community, in our church, as we together confront the, the gap that exists between the brokenness of our world and the harmony that our creator intended for his children. You know, the event has highlighted the urgent, especially highlighted the urgent need for racial healing and reconciliation with those that historically been and continue to be oppressed in our society. So as we begin our time of prayer, let us have a moment of silent prayer. So uh, that through the revelation of such pain and sadness in this past week, that God strengthens us to cleanse our land of the evils, the racism, and the divisions that oppose our, the way of God, the, those that make the headlines and those that don't. So. We, we serve a God of greatness. We serve a big God and that we can offer up our prayers to. So let's start out with a moment of silent prayer. Almighty God, slow us down that we may hear and see you more clearly. Help us to confront the evils in our world, to see and hear each other more truly. Our, our own ways have not worked, so help us to find your way. Give us wisdom, give us courage to build bridges between each other. And we pray that your spirit will continue changing, comforting, challenging, and healing all the people that welcome it. Living Spirit, we rejoice that you are a God who moves and acts in this world, who sees our needs and responds. As your people, we lift up our prayers, knowing that you hear and are so eager to send your grace. We pray for all who are sick and suffering. We pray for those who are mourning the loss of someone dear to them. We pray for all who are in some way walking through the valley of the shadow of death in their lives, that they may know the power of the resurrection and trust that suddenly the tables can be turned and that our bitter defeats can become the most ultimate of victories. Loving Savior, your knowledge of, of God, the Father surpasses any of ours. Your unity with God shows us God's presence with us. Forgive us when we do not follow you. Give us ears to hear your loving call that we might be made one with you. For we offer this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Alleluia, amen, amen. Please stand for the hymn.
Our scripture passage today is from the book of Ephesians, Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, and I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that at, his, at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So the focus of last week's sermon and today's sermon is on prayer. Jane preached last week on the, being persistent in prayer, about uh, using the passage from Luke 11, 5 through 13, and where Jesus says to us, ask and it will be given to you, Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. You, you may not receive the answer to your prayers for what you pray for because God really knows better than we do. But Jane's message was you have to wait. Be persistent, be patient, and sometimes you have to wait. This week, I'm taking a different look at prayer. But before we get started, and I, want, I want you to be truly honest. I want you to delve into this topic. I've got a question for you. How's your prayer life these days? How's it going? If you rated it from 1 to 10, where 1 is it's lacking and 10 it's fabulous, how would you rate it from 1 to 10? And if you're bold enough to, on the live stream, you can add, put it in the chat space where, where you see your prayer life right now. Prayer is challenging. I have to admit, and we, we have our ups and downs. We have good days and bad days in, in our prayer life. And I think that most of us struggle with prayer. Uh, that we could do better in this, this area. We may not pray as often as we should. And I'm one of those that I have to admit that my prayer life is not often always stellar. You know what my challenge is, prayer and my prayer? I'm going to be bluntly honest with you. And... You may not say, well, gosh, you may not want your pastor anymore. You may want Brent to change that uh, announcement message. But I'm going to tell you what I struggle with. Oftentimes in the midst of the prayer when I'm praying, I get distracted. I lose my thought process. I guess I have maybe a, a t touch of attention deficit with me, but I do. Let me give you an example. Sometimes on a really, really bad prayer day. Let me feel your presence to guide, support, and comfort me wherever I need it. Smooth out the rough spots in my day. Smooth. Hmm. Smoothie. Smoothie sounds great right now. What's the name of that place in Winter Park that have those great smoothies? Strawberry smoothies. That we were to die for. Strawberry. Hmm. Jane and I never made it to the strawberry festival this year. We were determined to go, but life got busy, ministry got busy, too many meetings. Uh, speaking of meetings, I'm late for a meeting at the church. I better go. Amen. <laughs> that ends my prayer. <coughs> Excuse me. That's a bad prayer day for me. I, anyone have some prayer days like that? Yeah, like a lot of you, a lot of us do. I'm glad I'm not the only one. But it's sad because we have this marvelous, magnificent gift of prayer. We could talk directly to the creator of the universe. That's fabulous, but often we don't take advantage of it. <coughs> we don't make time for it. Get my water again. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm praying for water. I'm hoping water will come. So, <clears throat> you know, it, it, it's, you know, we, we, we don't give our prayer our full attention. Thank you. Eat, never eat a granola bar right before you preach. You get stuck in your throat. Okay, back to where I'm. 
you know, we have this wonderful, magnificent prayer, this gift of prayer that we, we can tap into that uh, we don't take advantage of. We don't make time for it. We'll say, oh, I'll get to it later. Or, or sometimes we don't. I hear some people say, I just don't want to bother God. He's got bigger issues. He's got world hunger. He's got mass shootings. He's got the racial tensions. He's got rampant evil in the world, disasters. I'm just not going to bother God. But we have this direct connection to God. It's the God of all heaven and earth, 365 days a year, 24-7. Where else can you say that? Have you ever tried calling customer service lately? I see a lot of you have, shaking your heads. Many times you can't even call anymore. You, you, you've got to do an email, check an email, and, and uh, you, you may not get it back for, for a while. And then when you do get a call, you don't even get a live person. You get one of those irritating virtual assistants, you know, that's programmed to answer your questions. Unfortunately, the answer to every one of my question is, I'm sorry, but I don't understand your question. If I wanted to have that conversation, I'd talk with a two-year-old. So, But you know, this isn't the case with God at all. We always, at all times, every time have this direct lifeline to God through, through prayer. And he wants to talk with us. He desires to talk with us, to, to have our attention. And God is honored when we talk with him with prayer. And you know, what a great gift that is. But how often do we take advantage of it? And, and there's another thing that I would say that, that uh, we don't take advantage of when we, when we pray. So often we fill our life, our prayer life with small things, with minutia. Lord, help me find my car keys. Help me get a parking spot. You know, I, I like to call these prayers. I think these are going to happen anyway. You know, the, the, God really doesn't need your help. Your car keys are exactly where you left them. And yes, praise God you found a parking space, but so did hundreds of other people who didn't pray. They found one too. So, you know, but I, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not saying that I don't, you should not pray for the small things in your lives uh, because that a lot of our worries and anxieties are those small things or minor things. Yet, what I'm trying to say today, at times we must pray boldly. We must pray confidently. We must pray big. Prayers that would not be possible at all if only some sort of supernatural intervention would take place. Prayers that are utterly impossible if it were not for God. Results that could not have been accomplished by our own doing, by our own powers, by our own abilities, but they could only happen through God's power that give glory to God. Pray for needs that only God can meet. Pray big. And when we do pray big, we, we honor God. We honor God, and we are putting our trust in God through Jesus Christ as we, we trust his glorious mercies and his graciousness. And our faith in him as we do this is increased. As, as we see, encounter unbelievable, unfathomable responses, answers. It kind of pulls us out of the ordinary of our own lives into the magnificent splendor of God's realm. It deepens our faith, as well as drawing others to God, because they see the wonders that they realize can only happen if God were a part of it, if God intervenes in power and majesty, and not through any human power or will. So let's look back at the scripture we, we focused on earlier today, uh, specifically to the passage that starts in the middle of verse 17, these words of the Apostle Paul. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. So Paul's desires for the people of the church of Ephesus, and really for us too, is that we are to know how immense the love that Christ has for us, a love that surpasses all anything that we can comprehend. And God glories in us offering us his praise and thanksgiving it's pouring out its blessing to him that glorifies God and that glorifies him we are to be filled with the fullness of God is there any limit to the fullness of God 
No, there isn't. God's just willing to pour the fullness of God out to us in abundance. So when we pray big, we are praying out of God's abundance, not out of our own scarcity. How immense must that abundance be? That God wants to fill in us, surround us, that we, that we have access to only if we ask and receive. And what can God do as he fills us the fullness of God through all of this, our big prayers? Let's go to verse 20. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within me. So we can tap into this immeasurably more, as a children's moment said, what does that mean? What does immeasurably more mean? Immeasurably more than all we ask and, or, and imagine. How big is God's fullness? It's interesting that, that um, this phrase in Greek, immeasurably more, it has English translators, Bible translators, have trouble translating into English. They can't really describe it. It's beyond words. It's beyond what we can describe it as. They have difficulty describing what this immeasurably more is. So, and we look at different Bible translations and to see how they try to translate it. Here's some, here's some examples. Vastly more than more. Beyond all things. Super abundantly beyond and above all things. Far over everything surpassingly more than all, transcendently more, far, far more than, everything immeasurably far beyond. And then the last one is actually probably tro closer to the to true trans Greek translation of it, but it's very awkward. Infinitely more abundantly above all. That's really what it means. So you get the picture of how Paul is describing what God is capable of doing for us and in us, that God is willing to lavish all this upon us, and we have access to it. If we only would just pray big and not pray so small, not keep our prayers so small, because it is his power that is at work within us. So let's not squander this privilege. It's what a great opportunity we have, this gift, this invitation to pray, you know, it, this offer of God's power to work in and around us as we go through our life's journey. And the prayer is truly an invitation from God to come and, and fellowship with him. It's not an obligation. It's not something we have to do. God is inviting us to pray. And it's the tendency that, that our prayers are sometimes focused on what's around us, what we need, the littleness of our realm of our lives. What can God, what can you do for me, God? What can you do? And we kind of miss the broad scope of what God can do, see, and act in the realm beyond our sight. It's like we've got blinders on, only see what he's capable of doing in our lives. But he can do so much infinitely more abundantly above all that he is capable and willing, so willing to do. In seminary, I performed an internship for a chaplaincy position at, at the University of Kentucky Medical Center. I was working an evening shift at the hospital and I got called into a situation which is the worst of all situations. It's a family member who was near death and the family had to make a decision whether to continue treatment in hopes that the person would recover or withdraw life support because further treatment would just prolong the agony. Half of them wanted to prolong life support, the other half uh, wanted to withdraw it. So they asked me to come in. And I frankly didn't know why, why they wanted me, expected me. Did they want me to be a mediator to act as I made their decision? Did they want me to make the decision for them? Or did they want me to pray for some kind of sign to make it all clear for what them to do? I, I was terrified, I was frightened, I didn't know what to do. So I listened to what they said and then did the only thing I knew at that time to do. I prayed, I prayed. I don't even know what I prayed, but I prayed out loud in the waiting room in front of the whole family, and then, then I left. I, I was a little scared and terrified, I just left. You know, I felt guilty that I just walked off. So later on that evening, I walked into the waiting room to see how things were going with the family. I thought, you know, I thought there'd be some kind of brawl or screaming match going on, but I found that they were all sitting there calmly chatting to each other. The situation had not changed. 
the family member was dying and eventually did. However, they said their tempers has, had eased and that they were able to come to a decision that they all could agree upon and thanked me for the prayer. I, I left even more baffled about what happened, but knowing that God worked in a way in that situation that I could not have possibly imagined or fathomed. It was God's power, his abundant power that did that. Prayer is somewhat of a mystery sometimes because we don't always know if the prayers will be answered in a way we want them to be answered. God knows more than we, about it, what we need than we do. Prayer is an invitation to, for us to talk with God, to get to know God in a more intimate and more convincing way. And so let's not squander this invitation. This opportunity to allow us to, not only to pray to a, the creator of the universe, but us to show us, for God to show us and show the world how wide and large and long and high and deep God's love is through Jesus Christ for us. And that he is able to do immeasurably more than we could ever fathom or comprehend or ask or imagine according to his power that is in work within us. Now, again, I'm not saying we shouldn't pray for the small things. Don't get me wrong here. However, the challenge this morning is to all, including myself, ever so often, pray big. Pray big. Pray for needs that only God can meet. And be filled to see, be, be filled to see how God moves in a powerful way, in only a way that only God can do. Do you want to spend another year praying for little stuff, or do you want to bring about something that glorifies God in our lives? You know, when we pray, we don't want to give pray with only just a shopping list of requests for God. But as we pray, we should be aligning ourselves to seeing our lives our worlds, our relationships, our concerns from God's point of view. And we'll, we'll have a stronger sense to make our world to be more like the kingdom of God and for us to be grown in the, in the image of Christ that we were created for. So when we pray, we pray out of God's abundance, out of his fullness, not as some sense of scarcity or not enough. Pray that the love of God would rule in our lives. Pray that the love of God would rule in our land. Pray specifically, don't pray general, pray, pray specifically where would you like to see that happen. Pray for healing and comfort and hope as, as we move beyond this pandemic, while at the same time praying for those who are still suffering or praying for those who lost a loved one. Name those people. Don't just do a general prayer. Name them. Pray big. Pray for any situation in your life or, or someone near to you that, that seems sort of utterly hopeless or, or impossible. Pray that God would move in that lives. Pray for this church that it will thrive and flourish beyond these years. Help us to be a church that truly makes disciples of Jesus Christ, that brings on the kingdom of God, and pray that we will have a global influence. Help us to achieve things missionally that are utterly impossible unless we know God is in it. Help us to be a church that offers healing in our broken times. And yes, this is a time we need to pray big because we've got some big issues here in our world today. We're facing problems that we've never faced before. We're in uncharted waters. We're, we're coming out of the COVID pandemic, which we're not fully out of yet. And, and we're having broad divisions in our land and in our nation and our church. And the, the tensions that we've experienced this week with the, 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 the recent George Floyd case, how do we heal glaring racial inequalities in our land, while at the same time, we're upholding the many honorable and wonderful law enforcement service in our community that would never have let this happen. How do we do both? Big problems call for us to pray big, for all things are possible with God. So I want to end this sermon here by putting this into practice. You were asked to pray for to pray big today. What was your first knee-jerk reaction? What if I said, pray big, what would you pray for? Let's do it at this time. Let's have a moment of silent prayer after the sermon here. And, and if you want to respond in the chat space as to what you would pray for if I said, challenge you to pray big. So let's have a moment of silent prayer and let's pray big.
Almighty God, the creator of all heaven and earth, you have given this wonderful gift, invited us to be a part of this wonderful gift called prayer. Lord, let us not squander this. Let, it, let us pray for those things that, uh, that we will know that if we do that, if they, uh, if they happen, that it was only through your mercy and grace and not through anything that we've done. Let the world see how abundantly immense your love and power is in our lives and the, the, uh, how abundant and unlimited is your love for us through Jesus Christ. Lord, we offer these prayers to you, knowing that you hear them and you will answer. Not always the way we want them to be answered, but we know that you hear and will respond and that you are a loving and, uh, and a great God. We have big problems, but we know, Lord, you are a big God. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our thanks to our orchestra. That was beautiful. There is a, a great um, chapter in the book of Psalms, Psalm 102, and it's actually a prayer. It's by a prayer of, by a man going through a rough time of his life. It's called an afflicted man. And he's lamenting his life because life isn't going well. And I love the book of Psalms for that very reason because the book of Psalms allows us and reminds us that our feelings are real and sometimes we are afflicted, sometimes we lament. And that we can be totally honest with God. We can tell him when we feel that way. But the beautiful thing about the Psalms and those, those who wrote for the book of Psalms, while they lament, they always come back to where the grace is. They express their frustration, but they always end on God's goodness and on his grace. So in chapter 1 or 2, the, the author ends with, and he says this about God, but you, God, remain the same. Your ears will never end. 
It's almost like he's reminding himself that as bad as it can be at times, God's never going to change. He's going to be there for us. He'll never go away. Uh, the fall, we had a need here at the church, and it was two buildings that needed re what roofs replaced. It was the um, Powell Hall and the Children's Center. And by the grace of God, and I'll say that we were in the middle of a pandemic, we were able to replace those roofs, and that's a blessing. Well, this past week, we had another need. The Disciple Hall, which is right next to us here, it needed a new roof. We had this amazing group of trustees who were constantly following all the consistent leaks and said it's time. And by the grace, and I, this, I really mean this, by the grace of God, we had the money to replace that roof in the midst of a pandemic. You know, there's a lot of things around us that aren't going right. So when we see something going right, we need to name it. That's true in our personal lives. That's in the church life. That's wherever we are. Where we see God's grace, we need to name it. And so today we're just very grateful to God's grace. And we're grateful to all of you that made it possible that we can keep worshiping and, and keeping this campus in the shape it needs to be. Today, if you would like to be able to give, you can do so um, if you're online in the chat space just below. But it, or you may just all have apps, and you can go to your app. We have baskets at the back of the church if you'd like to give if you're in the sanctuary here. But the most important thing is, no matter what, keep looking for God's grace. Keep looking where you see his faithfulness. Because he is not going anywhere. He will remain the same, and he will continue to be faithful.
Let us pray. Ever-present God, who speaks in thunder and earthquakes and in the softest whisper, we long to hear your voice over all the noise of the world this day. In a world so divided and polarized, we need to hear not only the voice of the shepherd, but the cries of other sheep who are being marginalized, forgotten, and abandoned. May the gifts we offer today be our response to hearing the one who speaks in the language of love and compassion. In his holy name, amen. As a reminder, uh, we have a blood drive back in the parking lot uh, after the service. You'd like to go uh, do your service, and, and, and you will be helping someone you will never, never meet. And that's what we do as Christians, helping others out. So now receive this benediction. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge of the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit. And the blessings of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Blessed